So in part two, we're gonna turn this into a mobile workstation. Now what I've got here in front of me is I've got some of this power tech uh, T-Track, so you'll be able to put the T-Tracks in there and that's what I'll use to clamp it down. I decided to go this route instead of physically clamping stuff down to the workstation, one, to give me more flexibility, and two, is I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted to lay this out. As I mentioned before, they make several sizes of this cabinet. This is the smaller size, which means there's less work area, so I'm gonna have a little less flexibility in there, so I wanna put the track in to be able to move stuff around and keep this platform as flexible as possible. To do this, I'm gonna to have to cut a three quarter inch channel in the top to sink the T-Track in. So I went ahead and ran up to the Harbor Freight and bought me the three pack of the handy dandy Warrior routers. Uh, this, this kit includes the quarter inch, the half inch, and the three quarter inch. So you'll see that in this video as I cut this top out. Stay tuned to see how we get this done. Okay, so here's my plan. The top is 18 inches wide, so I'm gonna set the track in at about two and a half inches on each side, and then I'm gonna put this one center on nine inches. That'll give me three lengths of the track all the way down the top. The top is 42 inches long, so I will have to cut these. I also bought these little brackets that I'll be able to set into the channel, and then set rest on the edge of various tools and tighten down, and then I bought some other T-Track bolts as well to be able to you know, tie things down, secure them up tightly. So my first step here is to route my three quarter inch channel. Now you'll notice this top is not very thick. Uh, I actually thought about replacing this top and building something out of like a two by six or two by 10 and putting it together. But I thought since this is gonna be my first run at it, I'll go ahead and use the top that's on there. If I destroy it, if I don't like what I'm doing, I can always build a new top for it later. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dig into this. Let's get started. All right, I've got my three grooves routed out on here. Uh, ran into a couple of small issues. One, I wasn't careful and I let the router drift in a couple of places. I think I was trying to cut a little too deep, was pushed a little too hard, and then when it moved on me, it cut that. So by the time I got to the middle channel, instead of trying to do it in two passes like I did with the first cut, I ended up doing this in four passes. It made it a lot cleaner, so that was my fault, lessons learned. But if you're gonna do a project like this, I would recommend that you move, go, move very slow, uh, cut very small cuts, and do this in like three, four passes. I think you're gonna get a lot better results. Second issue that I ran into is right where these outer channels are, the screws that held the top down to the bottom, that's right where they were. So after the first pass, I was able to see them. Thankfully, I didn't hit them, but I did have to take them off and I did have to separate the top from the cabinet to continue cutting my grooves. Um, that also means that I'm gonna have to figure out another way to reattach it. Probably what I'll do is just go through the T-track all the way down into the top with you know, maybe three screws on each track or something. We'll, we'll see when I get to that point. All right, the other thing I wanna show you is look at that pile of sawdust on the floor right there. That pile is just what I swept up off the floor. That doesn't include all the dust that's in the air. Everything in the garage is covered with dust. I've, I've actually already spent about 20 minutes trying to clean up and everything is still covered with dust. So I wish I would have pushed this outside and done this router job out in the side yard or even in the driveway. It would have been a whole lot easier to clean up and deal with. So note to self, I should have known how much dust that router was gonna put off. But all in all, I'm not too worried about this top. Like I said, if it doesn't come out the way I wanted it to, I was gonna replace it anyway. So I think this is a great first start. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay the track in so you can see what that looks like. And then, uh, and then we'll talk about next steps. All right, here's what it looks like with the tracks laid in there. Obviously, I still need to cut the tracks and get them mounted to the top, so we'll do that soon. I just will show you, this is the first one I cut, and I was trying to cut too deep at once, and I ended up with a little slop there. The middle was the last one I cut. No slop at all, it's, it's, it's perfect, it fits. So 
Uh, again, definitely take your time. I wish I would have spent a little bit more time. It's not bad, but there's definitely some grooves and some sloppiness in there. It's a little bit on the ugly side. Again, I figure this thing's gonna get beat up with the tools on it, so I'm not too worried about that at the moment, but I uh, just wanted to share my own mistakes, so hopefully somebody else can learn from them. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut these tracks to length. Like I said, my tabletop length is 42 inches, but rather than just mark this at 42 inches, I'm gonna lay the tracks out. Um, to make sure I get good bite, I'm actually going to have to have a little bit of overhang on both sides so the last two holes can still catch, which means for this to work optimally, I'm going to end up cutting a little bit off of both ends. Okay, to get these holes to line up the way I want them to where I can get the one at both ends, I need to cut about an inch off the end of that. So you can see what that will look like, but I'm going to go ahead and mark these at about one inch and then go ahead and cut all three of them and then we'll come back and mark the other edges and complete the rest of the cuts. I've got all the T-track pieces cut to length. I don't have the screws I need, so I'll come back and do that on the second part of the video. But I just want to give a quick demonstration. This is what the bracket looks like. It fits in that channel. You can move it back and forth. Simply clamp your piece on there, tighten it down, and it holds that in place. So I made the trip out to the local big box store and got some things to attach the top with. One, I got some number eight by half inch wood screws and I got some eight 32nd by one inch machine screws. So what I'm gonna do is I'll use just the regular threaded wood screw to put down some of the things. I picked this short one. It won't really grab too much, but it also won't punch through the metal top. And then in several places down the side, I'll use these longer one inch machine screws and I'll drill all the way through the underlying metal top and that'll hold the rail and the top down both. So I've already got this rail attached and I noticed where the fold of the metal was here on the edge was right where that screw was gonna line up and I didn't want to drill through that in fear of compromising that, that point. So what I started to do was do the wood screws in every other hole and since there's 11 holes across here, that actually worked out really nice. So I've got six with just the wood screws and then five with the longer bolts that actually go all the way through the metal. Um, that will create 15 holes in the top all the way through in the end, but they're small. I think that's pretty acceptable. I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my channel is in there where I want it. And then I'll go ahead and put the half inch wood screws in every other hole all the way down the length. Working with screws this short in this cheap pressed wood, you really got to be careful not to overdrive them and just strip them out. So I'm sure in the video you hear my impact driver really uh, pounding and that's not because I'm going tight, it's because I'm going slow. Okay, I've got my wood screws set in every other hole down both of these two rails. So now I'm going to drill the remaining holes through and then start putting the bolts in. So I've taken the upper drawer out so I can reach under there to put a nut on the back side of this. The bolts I'm using, that's a nine millimeter nut. So I'm able to slip the ratchet on that and then hit that with the drill and it tightens up really quick. I am attempting to put a little Loctite on there. Um, it's a little bit of a sloppy process to put that on there and reach underneath. So I'm not sure how effective that is, um, but I'm going to continue to try it anyway because I know over time if a little Loctite on there, it, hopefully it will stay on there better and not shake loose. The other thing I'll mention is that middle one's particularly tricky to get to because that's right where that bar for the locking mechanism runs to the back to enable that. So that one's pretty tough to get a hand on. This is what it looks like with all the screws and bolts installed. 
pretty happy with the way this came out. Can't wait to get the tools mounted and uh, start using this as a mobile workstation. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Maybe I'll do a part three, shows you how I set up the tools, maybe what I've got stored in the drawers. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please check out some of my other videos and think about subscribing to my channel. I do lots of tool reviews and other things. I'll put some links here in the video. Finally, to all my brothers and sisters serving in harm's way around the world, you're always in my thoughts. Be safe out there. Till next time, everybody.